Hey everybody, how you doing? I hope you're doing great. My name is Stephen. I'm the lead pastor here at Islands. Thanks for joining us as we gather uh, every Thursday night for communion and for prayer. Hey, if you would, go ahead and grab your communion supplies, the things you're going to be using to remember the body and the blood of Christ, and uh, prepare those so when we get to that part of the service, you'll be ready to go. Hey, you know, the week after Jesus resurrected from the dead, it was pretty confusing for his followers. They were a little bit stuck. They didn't really know what to do. I mean, the gospel writers tell us that Jesus showed up and kept kind of showing himself to them to prove that he was actually alive, but he wasn't really giving them a lot of instructions initially, so they didn't know really what to do. So they were kind of stuck, and they just weren't sure. Eventually, a guy named Peter just did what he knew how to do. He said, hey, guys, I'm going fishing. A few other guys stood up and said, yeah, we'll go with you. So they took off, and they went fishing, and you fished at night where they lived, and so they fished all night, and they didn't catch a thing. And so as the sun's coming up that morning, Jesus is on the shore. Of course, they don't recognize him as Jesus. He's standing there, and he screams out like everybody on the shore does, hey, did you guys catch anything? And all these guys in the boat are like, no, we didn't catch a thing, which is also a very common fishing story, I'm told. And so Jesus says, throw your nets on the other side of the boat. And so these guys throw their nets on the other side of the boat, and boom, all of a sudden they have this miraculous catch of fish, like an unbelievable amount, definitely a miracle. And then one of the disciples in the boat is like, hey, that's Jesus. And before they know it, Peter jumps into the water, swimming to the shore to meet Jesus. He leaves all the work to the other guys who are hauling the fish in. And they get to the shore, and Jesus greets them, and he takes some of the fish And these guys experience a miracle that day because they did something. You know, some of us right now are just stuck. You know, we don't know what to do. We're we're uncertain, we're unsure about, um, you know, what we should do next and what we should be doing with our time. And I just want to encourage you, I want to challenge you to do something. Just do something. Because when we do something, I believe Jesus shows up in that and uses our effort for his good to bring about good things, to bring about good things in people's lives. So I got a father-in-law. My wife's dad is 83 years old, and he spent two hours on the phone the other day calling people to check on them. I saw this post on Facebook. Check this out. Yes, he is 83 years old, almost 84 this summer, and he knows how to post on social media. Pretty amazing, right? I was outside working in the yard that day when he was making these phone calls, and I saw him on the porch for two hours talking with people on the phone. Now, here's the thing about my father-in-law. He's a social guy. He loves to go see, see people. He loves to, you know, go have lunch with people. He grows a garden every year just so he can take vegetables to people and give it to them. He enjoys seeing people. And during this coronavirus, he's not able to go and do like he wants to. It'd be easy for him to get stuck and be uncertain as to what to do and just do nothing and stall out. But instead, he he did something. He made phone calls and he checked on them. Now, I didn't talk to him about this. I didn't ask him about it. But I'd be willing to bet that if you asked him about it, he would tell you that he was more blessed, that he was encouraged by taking the time to call these people probably more than the people he called to check on. He probably experienced more of Jesus because he did that. He didn't know what to do, but he just did something. And he probably experienced a blessing because of that. You know, Jesus, when he gets to, when the guys get to the shore, I love that Jesus doesn't scold these guys. You know, he doesn't say, what are you guys doing fishing? Don't you know I just resurrected? I mean, you've got way more important things to be doing. He doesn't do that at all. Instead, he's got warm bread sitting by the fire, just hot, ready to eat, He says, hey, bring me some of those fish, guys, and he cooks these guys breakfast, and he spends time with them. You see, these guys experienced a miracle because they were willing to do something. So what about you? You could do something as well. You don't have to wait to figure out what's the right thing to do. You could just do something. It might mean that you make a list of people you're going to call. It doesn't even have to be people you're super close to. It could just be people that you think of, like, hey, I'm going to call them, I'm going to text them, I'm going to check on them and see how they're doing. It might be postcards. Do you know you can buy 50 postcards on Amazon for 10 bucks? 50 of them for 10 bucks. And postage for a postcard is 35 cents. I mean, for just a little bit of money, you can send a lot of people postcards just to let them know you're thinking of them and praying for them. And if you don't want to do that, you could go on your social media 
you could look on people's profiles and see what they do for a job, you know? You know you look at people's profiles. You know you look. So go and see if anybody works for a doctor's office or they're a nurse or a doctor, send them a message. Just be like, hey, I'm praying for you. I want you to know that I hope you're safe. And then literally pray for them right then. You could walk in your neighborhood tonight. When this is over with, you could get up, go outside, walk the streets in your neighborhood, stop in front of houses, and pray for people. Pray for the people that live in that house. You don't even have to know them. You could just pray for those families. You could have your kids go to your neighbor's house and in the driveway take sidewalk chalk, draw pretty pictures and sunrises and write encouraging messages, include scripture if you want to. I mean, these are all things that you could be doing. You could do them. And in the process of doing them, I believe that Jesus could move and work and do things with your effort. See, you don't have to figure out what's doing the right thing. You just have to be willing to do something. And if you are willing to do something, Jesus can bring about life through what you're doing. So, I believe you're capable of experiencing way more than you're experiencing right now. I believe that you could see Jesus do amazing, miraculous things in, with you and in your life right now. But it's going to demand that you have the courage to do something. And this is why Jesus came. You know, Jesus came and he died for our sins on the cross. And we talk about that all the time. But he also came so he could be in relationship with us and lead us and guide us. And you have him to lead you and to guide you. And if you will just participate with him, just do something, he will use it for his glory. So right now, I want us to just kind of stop. And I want us to, want us to remember Jesus, to reflect on him, to worship him, and to participate in communion together. Let's worship him right now. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you.
trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken, and I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation, and I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken and holy. There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And I Tonight, we want to remember that Jesus offered us his presence to be with us. And so let's do that right now. Let's remember that Jesus gave his body for us. Take and eat. And let's remember that he gave his blood for us. Take and drink. As we wrap up tonight, I want to encourage you. I just want to challenge you to be available to Jesus to do something. So would you take a few seconds right now and just pray? Would you pray and make a commitment in your prayer to God? You could say, God, I will call five people over the next couple days. Or God, I'm going to walk the, the streets of my neighborhood and pray for my neighbors the ones I know by name and the ones I don't know, I'm going to pray for them. Maybe pray and say, God, I promise I'm going to send a card or I'm going to message a, a health care worker or anything else you can think of right now. Would you say a prayer right now where you are, making a commitment to God of what you're going to do? Let's do that right now. What I'd like you to do now is actually go public with your commitment. I'd actually like you to tell the entire internet right here on this video. Just make a comment right now of what you just said you would do. So if you said, hey, I'm gonna call five people, just write in the comments. I'm gonna call five people before the end of the week. Or if you said, hey, I'm gonna write some cards, write that. Just type that in the comments. Whatever it is, just type it in the comments of what you're going to do. Make that commitment public. In a way, you're kind of holding yourself accountable by just putting, out, putting it out there for everybody to see. You're not really saying, oh, look at me, I'm so amazing. You're just saying, hey, I want you to know, internet, everybody who knows me, I am going to do this. And so will you do that? Just put those in the comments right now.
I want to pray for you as we wrap up our time together. Father, I pray for these men and women, these children, these students that are all watching this right now, who they know that that they can be prone like all of us to be stuck, like those disciples were. They, They were stuck. They didn't know what to do. But Lord, you're just inviting us to be active, to to do something, and that God, you will be a part of it. So I pray that as the commitments were made, I pray that you would give follow through to the people who made them. As we just announced to the world that, that we are going to be people who do something. And we know that your son Jesus, is lo- he loves us and he's with us the entire time. And in his name we pray, amen. Hey, thanks for being with us tonight. Don't forget, this Sunday, 10 a.m., we'll be gathering for worship again. I cannot wait to see you there online.